Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube indeed, and welcome to this week's Quick Tips. I don't want to waste too much time today, but this one has been requested a lot, and I know that a lot of people are quite excited for it to come out, so it is time this week to paint purple. We're going to be showing you a nice workup that uh, loses a lot of that chalkiness that purple can sometimes have, keeps things looking bright, vibrant and punchy, and I think you're going to really find this one useful. Let's get to down cam, let's paint some purple. Okay, the colours we're going to use today, I'm just going to line them all up now. Eldritch Purple, Thuvian Sun Orchard, Ezrin Blue, Graveyard Bone. You can obviously find your equivalents to these, you just need basically a good purple, a good pink, uh, a nice deep blue and a bone colour. We're going to start off with that purple. Just put a few very thin, very even, nice base coats over the area that we wish to paint. Chose to do a cape this week instead of a space marine leg, just because I didn't want anyone to get sick of space marine legs. They're not probably the most entertaining thing to see every week, so it's just me base coating quickly. And we'll go into super speedy cam in just a second. And there you go. Let's get that base coat finished off. I used a hairdryer between coats here. You can actually see the paint magically drying before your eyes every time I blast it with a hairdryer. That's something that I tend to do most of the time. And after three, we're looking pretty good. Okay. Next up, we're going to get that Ezra and Blue. We're going to thin it right back to a nice transparent glaze and we're going to start placing it. And I do stress the word placing it into our shadows. For me, I like to highlight in a top down fashion. So I imagine that the light source is roughly above uh, the miniature. And I try to pick the areas to add shadows to that a light that was above would not be present in. building up a few successive layers of this Ezrin blue to get a nice deep clashing shade. You can see it looks really really stand out against this purple, that's why I use blue to shade purple. Two or three successive glazes, building up intensity. Trying to keep it fairly uh, see-through on the areas where it needs the purple work. The reason we keep it see-through there is because now we're going to get our same base purple, but this time as a glaze. We're going to glaze in the opposite direction out of those shadows to smooth the transitions away from them. This is the one stage that takes a little bit of patience because it's the biggest difference between two colours that you're trying to blend together. You're normally blending colours that are quite close together. So this is the one area where it's going to take you a little while of just layering up, layering up, layering up until eventually those transitions are going to look really soft and really clean just through building up layer after layer of transparent purple paint. This is the exact same purple we base coated in, just very, very thin. I've just hair dried it there, I popped it off screen for a second. Okay, so now we can start to get into highlighting. First of all, we're going to mix the pink and the purple, roughly equal parts. This is where we're going to plot in our first stage of highlights. These are quite big, they want to be fairly chunky. Again, I'm looking for areas that would be hit by light if the light was roughly above the miniature. And I'm just going to keep building these up in the same way, just progressively adding coat after coat after coat until I get a nice, smooth, clean transition. And again now, we'll hop back into our same purple and we'll glaze up the opposite way to blend these into the base colour. With purple, it is important to go with these extra steps to keep things looking smooth because purple is a colour that really likes to break up and either go chalky or blotchy. So these extra steps of just glazing back into that mid-tone just to keep those transitions looking clean, they really, really help. They're worth the extra little bit of time. Okay, once that's all tidy, now we'll go into pure pink. This is the uh, Thuvian Sun Orchid on its own. And again, we're keeping our paint very, very thin so that we can build up lots and lots of layers 
so that we can control the intensity of our blend. That is the reason for working with such thin paint. It takes a bit of patience, but having full control over the intensity of that colour really helps you give those clean, smooth, convincing blends. Up, building those up, building those up. You see I make a little mistake there and I just tidy it up just in the center on that Y-shaped section. Okay, and now we're going back into our previous color again. Same as before, we're glazing out of those highlights now back into the previous color to soften that transition. So a wet palette is going to really help you here so that you can keep each color lined up as you mix it. Okay, now we're going to go into a mixture of some of that Thuvian Sun Orchard with some of that bone. So now we're starting to get into our real bright highlights now. And with that in mind, we're going to need to start to use a bit of our brush control now. Try and keep those lines nice and thin, keep that paint under control. When paint is particularly thin like this, there is a bit of a myth that it's hard to control. It's actually just hard to, to understand how much paint is on your brush. Quite often you'll lose control of it because you're overloading your brush because you can't see how saturated your brush is. Every time I load my brush with a paint that's this thin, I blot the entire surface of the brush on a tissue before I touch it to the miniature. So the brush will just be damp with paint, not wet. Now we're going even brighter, just some more bone into that mix. We're just gonna use these tiny little T-shapes at the tips of highlights just to give some little sparkly areas. This again is uh, how we give those really nice sort of poppy raised little points throughout the workup. We keep these fairly sparse, we don't go overboard on them. And then one last switch up, this time to pure bone. This is just the skeleton bone on its own and exactly the same process but just a smaller highlight so t's within the t's y's within the y's h's within the h's you can see where i'm using these t y and h shapes and we just do exactly the same shape but smaller and use just a little bit of really thin down bone here this is super super thin just to transition into those highlights a bit cleaner so if they look a bit stark and you can see that that's what we're left with. Now I actually ended up uh, hitting this with some matte varnish and it went chalky from the matte varnish. So this has also just had a little coat of satin over it to calm that back down, which is why it looks a little bit gray, but uh, I think it's great. So there you have it, quick and easy purple as promised. Using that blue to get some good depth in there, using the, the pink mixed into the highlight mixture to try and keep that brightness going and avoid chalkiness. Hopefully this one has gone down as well as uh, it was anticipated when I showed the spoiler for it. I hope that you've all found it very useful. Please do join me next week for another long one and another session of quick tips. Bye for now.